church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe Jesus is God. We're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Glad to be in your house. Welcome to our Lord, church. Um, we just love you so much, and we want to give you all the praise and the glory that you deserve. And we do mess up so many times, Lord, but you say your mercies are new every morning for us, Lord, so we just... Believe that Holy Spirit is so welcome in the house. Help touch our hearts and change them. In Jesus' Lord. name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on down. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, Price is right. Come on. Come on down. Come on down. The word for this week and the no, I, it, it wasn't something I really picked out, but I was just happened to be reading last night, and it stuck with me. Uh, you know, we get so involved in everyday world, uh, just yeah. doing what we got to do, we feel like, and everything. John 18, verse 36, and this is where Jesus is talking to Pilate, when Pilate's, you know, getting ready to try to give him back to the people, but they don't want him. And he asked him if, you know, if he's taking the Jews, and he said, you said that. But he tells him, Jesus answered him and says, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Now think about that. Aren't we the same kingdom of Jesus? Yep. See, we focus so much on the physical realm in this kingdom that we live in that we forget the world. Christ's kingdom, the spiritual kingdom. And I think about that, and I think about it in James where it says, a double-minded man need not expect to receive anything from God. You know, in Matthew it says, seek first the kingdom, and everything that you have need of shall be answered, uh, you know, given to you. And yet, uh, and I'm not quite the finger at anybody but myself, and yet I go around every day thinking, you things I have to do for my family and for my welfare and, you know, show up at work and all these different things. And yet, the Bible tells me if I seek his kingdom, he's going to give me all those things. Talk about a double-minded man. I know I'm that guy a lot of times. You know, I'm not seeking first the kingdom because a lot of times I put the physical first. i got to go do this. I've got to go do that. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about, I saw on YouTube here a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, I'm one of those guys that's got a smartphone, and I used to give the kids a lot of heck for spending so much time on there anymore. I spend most of my evenings uh, after I get done on, on my phone, you know. Uh, but I was watching a thing, and they, they had Ken Copeland, one, one of the news things, who had cornered Ken Copeland, was asking him about his belt, millions of dollars of worth and everything, and I'm like, you know, I'm not pointing the finger at any of them. What I know is any of those ministers that are worth their salt, whether it's Ken Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Crepo Dollar, Joyce Mark, they're all worth millions. Yeah, they are. They're all worth millions. They yeah. all live in multi-million dollar homes. They all yeah. have jets. Yeah. You know, they are all doing these things. And I'm like, people want to point the finger at them and say, look, if you were doing good things, you'd spend that money on the poor. You wouldn't be... Mm -hmm having these things. And I'm like, 
They don't, they don't buck at where the people started out. That's right. You know, you talk to you, you hear Joyce Meyer, she drive 300 miles in an old beat up yeah. car that she didn't know what to cross the street yeah. with a bald tire boat to go breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You listen to Kid Copeland and, and uh, Gloria, when they started out, when he enlisted in or enrolled in uh, ORU, she said they lived in a one room apartment and they had one thing to cook with it was a coffee pot somebody had given them. They, Boiled their potatoes in the coffee pot. They <laughs> they warmed up their canned soup in the coffee pot. You know that's what they had. Jesse Duplantis, when he you know when he uh, got saved watching uh, Billy Graham on TV, he said the next weekend I made up my mind we were going to church. He said we followed a church bus to church. That's how we went to church. We didn't know where, which church to go to, so we saw a church bus and we followed it. <laughs> he said we got there. And he said, the pastor preached a message, and he said, at the end of the message, he said, well, keep praying, we're believing God for $8,000 to do some things with the church, fix up the church and everything. He said, everybody left, and they said, I asked him, I said, pastor, what's this, you're believing God for $8,000? He said, well, we need $8,000, you know, to fix up the church, had some things that broke me to fix, and different things. And he said, he looked at me, an old scruffy guy with a beard and long hair still had from his because he was in a rock and roll band that was very popular at the time. And he said, he's asking what kind of wonder, well, what am I going to do about it? And he said, I reached in my pocket. He said, I just got paid for the last 90 days. And he said, I had $80,000 in my gentleman jean jacket pocket. He said, I pulled it out and counted him out $8,000. He said, well, did that take care of him? He said, yeah. You know, these people, and then, and then for the next year, he said he knew God had called him into the ministry, but for the next year, nobody ever called him. He said, I'm wanting to preach, but nobody's calling me because he said, they know my past. Mm -hmm. He said, that preacher asked me if I had $80,000 in my pocket. He said, you can't buy drugs with a check or a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that was the truth, you know. But I can say, you see where these people start out. You know, it, 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 I, I really wonder, you know, people like to say that that, that outfit given Ken Copeland so much trouble. They don't realize Ken Copeland funded Rick Redler in Russia. He funded uh, Rick Renner. Yeah, he funded Rick Renner when he was in Russia, and Rick was there for 20 years when it, yeah. he was there for a time when it, if he got caught doing what he was doing, you know, he probably could have been killed yeah. or never heard from him again. He funded uh, who's the guy in South America, Bonke, Reinhard uh -huh. Bonke. You know, oh. he funded the big jail ministry out of Texas. And then they want to give him back because he's got money. You know, I believe the Bible says <laughs> that God gave the man that had five talents more talents. Amen. Because he invested it properly. And I think about that and I think, you know, it's just like Joyce. I mean, I think God's been good to her. She's done what she felt like she was called to do. And, they keep, and, and like I say, I wonder to myself if I could be more seeking the kingdom if I wouldn't have to worry about these issues that I have. But I have to have the faith to step out on it. And you need to ask us last week to pray about what you felt like God was speaking to us. Mm -hmm. And like I say, when I read that verse, you know, Jesus said, you know, this is not my kingdom. And I'm like, I think, well, I got to be in the world, but you're not of the world. You know, we get so all worried about the political and the all the different things that are going on around us in the, in the world and everything, you know. The Bible says, what can man do to me? You know, I'm going to be with Jesus forever. And uh, it doesn't really matter what, what this world turns out. Because it's going to be the way it says. It says it's going to burn up. I don't think it's going to change just because I do my best to make it a better country or whatever, you know. And I'm not saying we shouldn't. The best thing we can do for this country is be a good Christian and focus on the spiritual aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we can worry about all these different things, but we have to, you know, live our life according to the Word. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, like I said, when I read that, though, I'd say, this is not my kingdom. If it were my kingdom, my followers would fight. So what should we be fighting for? We should be fighting for that spiritual kingdom, that that kingdom that promotes Jesus Christ God, you know, and, and live accordingly, you know, that we he paid the sin death for us and you know that's mm -hmm. that's our ticket to eternity with him. Mm -hmm. And everything else after that. Paul said continue to do good till the end that you might reap the reward. Mm -hmm. 
know, so we know what good is by the word. You know, anymore we have people that try to tell us what good means. It's okay to do this, it's okay to do that. They don't want you to judge this or that, you know. But anyway, think about that. Think about that. Where's your kingdom? What is your kingdom? You know, I mean, like I say, I feel pretty double-minded when I think about it. I think I get into the world too much on most things and don't really focus on the kingdom of God as much as I should. Anyway. Thank you very much. That was it. Yes, it was. And apparently that's what God was speaking to you this week, right? Yeah. Was to focus on the kingdom. God is good. Well, I have a whole mouthful today, but let's just let's stand and give the Lord praise and honor. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. speaking to him to focus on the kingdom mm -hmm. instead of keeping your mind on it, you know everything that's going on out there in the world <clears throat> we get so caught up with um, you know I've been thinking lately well I need to find something else to do because I'm not making enough money <laughs> and then I'm thinking but I'm, I'm so busy doing stuff you know but uh, when we get thinking that way, then we're putting our faith in the money instead of putting our faith in God. And that's a lot like tithing. Sometimes that hurts to, to tithe because you'd like to keep it. Yeah. Especially, I mean, when it's just ten dollars or so, it's not a big, it's not a big uh, pull out of your pocket. But when you make a lot of less. Let's just say you make a thousand a week or so. Well, that's a hundred bucks. So then you're like, oh, man, I could really do something else with that money, so I don't know if I should get that or not. And then it becomes a real offering. And I think that's what God speaks to us a lot of times to put your faith in Him and not so much in making the money, making the money, making the money. Or maybe you're lacking in the money. And you, you maybe give a dollar, maybe that's all you made this week. When you pay that dollar more, but you know what? You paid the dollar. Mm -hmm. God will supply your need when you put your faith yeah. in Him, right? Yep. You know, a lot, lots of times we we take it within our own power to get out there and do stuff. But if you're paying your tithe, God's going to bless you. Well, I don't know why I got off on that. Or <laughs> Rock saying, it's true. You know, that, that's kind of what, you know, what I was trying to say about some of the ministers and stuff. I think, you know, it's like Robert Morris. He's giving away everything he's got yeah. twice. And every time, he said, you know, it just comes back more and more. And I think a lot of times, you know, the world says, and, and I'm going to say back when I was a teenager, and Billy Graham and Chris Shane were big on TV <coughs> and stuff. I put him down, and the reason I put him down was because he'd get on there and say, well, if we don't have donations, he said, we're operating in the red, this crusade can't go on. I'm like, you got three multi-million dollar homes and you're begging me for money? <laughs> you know? And I mean, that's why I said it. You know, that's what I thought in my heart at that time, because I wasn't a person of God. And, you know, he was convicting me of some things. And I'm like, don't stand there and tell me about you need my money when you got 10 times, 10,000 times as much as I do. But see, that's, that's how the world looks at that. But mm -hmm. God, they don't realize that, that that minister gets a regular paycheck like everybody else, and the rest of the money that's taken in usually goes out to missions or goes out to feed the hungry or goes yeah. out to pay yeah. for a plane for them to travel someplace. You know, but, but the Bible work. says he'll pour out a blessing so big that we can't contain him. You know? And when he does, and, and just like, like I was saying, the, the parable of the talents, 
you know, when a person took those talents that were given and reinvested and reinvested, it just keeps coming back bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. all the time. I do believe that. You can use your talents for God. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I say, you know, but the world looks at it and says, oh, they're just, you know, them ministers, they're just wealthy and they're begging these poor old ladies for their last dime, you know. Well, really, they're giving those ladies a chance to sow now, into something yes, like that. Yes, but there, there are, again, on the opposite side, there are ministers that do it for the wrong reasons. Right, yeah, so right. you have to be in tune with God and prayerful about where you spend your money. Right, right. Because it does matter. You know, we don't want to give to... Um, I've known of women just giving everything. Yeah. Their homes, their cars, or everything away, and then that... That person takes advantage of it and they use it for wrong. Look at a lot of the, uh, who's the guy that gave all the people the Kool-Aid that killed them? Oh, Jones. 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 Yeah, I mean, you got to be careful. You have to be prayerful pray about it. Right. You have to use discernment and be in touch with God. That's what I mean. About well, the communication the thing. Word. You know what they're ministering. Right. It has yeah. to line up with the Word of God. And last week we talked about since we're going that way, we'll keep it going. <laughs> uh, we talked about to get along with God and listen and to hear what God was speaking to you. And I'd just like to hear if anybody, well, Bruce already spoke to him. And I had one person come up to me this morning and say, I did that and, and I can't hear anything. So what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. You just keep right on doing it, mm -hmm. right? Did anybody else get along with God this week and listen to what he was speaking to? I got along with God and listened, but he was silent for me this week, too. Why they? He's been speaking a lot through the Word because of what I'm studying. Well, that's speaking to you. Yeah, you know, and he's, he's causing me to, <laughs> just because a man says it and it's been said for eons and ages in the past doesn't make it true. Right. This is so and, right. and he he's been telling me, you know, the scripture says to study to show thyself to prove yeah. a workman that you need not be ashamed. And and um, so he's telling I guess he's speaking to me that I need to dig the gold out of the scripture for myself and yeah, listen yeah. to what somebody and it's okay to listen. We come every week and listen. Yes. And that's what he tells us to do because there's wisdom. Mm -hmm. But um he also tells us to do it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. right. We have to eat every day, not not just yeah. once a week. That is so true. Yeah. You you take in your food every day, don't you? You can't go a whole week without eating. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same with the Word of God. You know, you should come on Sundays and you should come on Wednesdays. Amen. And and get fed. Amen. As many times as the, the door is open, you should be here. But, you know, I'm not whooping anybody. I'm just saying that the Hebrews talks about is to gather together. Yeah. Why do we gather together? To be encouraged, to yeah. worship together, to talk about his word. The, what, the one thing that the people didn't have that followed Jim Jonesy is they were following a man. Mm -hmm. They didn't get in the word for themselves. Right. You have to, you pick your own meals to eat, don't you? What do you want to have tonight? Oh, roast beef. <laughs> well, you pick your own meals. You have to choose your food every day, just like in the Bible. You know? We had a lady in this town that was had a following of people that yes, we did. really, really pulled some down. In the, mm -hmm. not, not, we don't gather just to be blessed ourselves, but we don't realize sometimes that when we come, we're a blessing to other people. Yes. So you know, we have something to give somebody else as well as get for ourselves. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is why I like to talk in the church because yep. you hear from others. And that's how the Holy Spirit works. He works through each and every one of us, not just me. I mean, I might be the pastor who's saying, you know, to pastor the sheep, reel it in a little bit. Get this one over here. You know, you're getting, you're talking too much or you're, Let's keep it limited or whatever. I'm just here to herd the sheep. You're the sheep. Yeah. We need to feed each other, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I say, just like Barb said, we need to get in the Word because Amen. if we don't, we can be 
you know, I think it's in Second Peter where it says that they twisted the scripture and that that's how they were, you know, led astray. Many will be led down the path of destruction listening to the scripture being twisted, if you think about that. And, and that's how a lot of the cult yes. religions, yeah. they, they hold up the Bible and say this is what we teach, but they tweak it just a little bit. But if you don't know that word, you don't know yeah. that they're twisted if you a little bit. you haven't studied it like it. In the King James, look up the Greek meaning. Yeah. I mean, you have to go by what the Greek and the um, and then the old. It would be the other, Arabic and uh, mm -hmm. Hebrew. We need to know what the word does. There's another. Scripture. You got to dig it out for yourself. There's another scripture that says, "Search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life." Yeah. Well, that's kind of an interesting phrase. You think you have eternal life. It sure is, because here's here's one thing that always, you know, I don't understand how someone can go a whole week and not look in the Bible or read the Bible, because that's your yeah. lifeline. You've got to get interested in it. Even if you don't understand it, find a translation you understand and let it feed you, because you just... I used to say all the time, read the Word and work the Word. The Word works when you work it. That means you've got to get it in you. You've got to work it. You've got to read it, and then you've got to obey it and do it. You've got to walk it. It's walking out your faith in Him. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're not going to slip and fall sometimes. Sometimes when we walk down the street, we might slip, we might fall. But we get back up, don't we? Usually, <laughs> unless we break something. <laughs> get back up. And here's, a, here's kind of the thing to think about when you sit alone and you listen to God to see if he's, what he would speak to you. A lot of times it's going to sound like your own voice. A lot of times it's going to sound like it's you thinking it. But it's really God putting that in your mind. Maybe you need to repent over something in the past. You know that maybe you keep thinking about something keeps coming up from the past maybe you need to do some repenting over that or maybe you need to talk to somebody and get things cleared up or, or whatever it may be anybody else that got something God's been speaking to them I think that's the hardest part is when he's talking to you whether whether he's really you're really thinking it or he's talking to you and mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to distinguish between him talking to you and, and yeah. your, your own thoughts it is quiet. It, it is a quiet, still voice. So that's why it's hard. You have to listen. And, uh, and the word that came to me was love. Love. Mm -hmm. And uh, John three sixteen was uh, one that I thought of, and, and uh, we studied uh, First John, the whole book of First John. Mm -hmm. Love is all through that. Yes. Good book to study. I've never studied any book in the Bible. I First John. First John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the whole book. Not only just. Love is the whole thing. I've had two wives that I love dearly, and you know, I experienced, I don't know, I don't think there's any other way you can experience love through a marriage. It's just a man and woman love for each other. It's special love. You, know, I know. you have love for other people. So that's a special love. Yeah. Yeah. Someone you can count on, depend on. Yeah. And when you're up or when you're down. You think right, of but... all the music and songs with love in them. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, I don't know what you, it's just not the same as you know, they talk about love between a man and a woman, but uh, it's uh, uh, sometimes it's taken pretty lightly. Yeah. yeah. It's all about love. Yes, sir. He wanted to say. I was just going to add to what Mark said. Uh, the scripture said that uh, for any of them who think you have eternal life, mm -hmm. it also said. For these are they who testify. Yeah. yeah, I was just reading that. That's right. You think you yeah, have eternal life. For the what? These are they who testify. 
These are made of wood. wood. These are they which testify of me. With Jesus speaking, he was talking to speak. mm -hmm. He was telling the Pharisees. John 8, 30, or 5, 39. Mm -hmm. I've often thought about that. That word think in there. Yeah, me too, right? You think you, you know, you, you know you're it's kind of like you think you have eternal life. Well, do you have eternal life? Yeah. You know, we need to question if what we're thinking is according to the word. That's right. Or according to man. Right. Is it true yeah. or pure, or is it mm -hmm. what I want? You know, am I am I twisting the scriptures to? say what I want them to say so I can be comfortable in my sin? Mm -hmm. Or am I... Oh, watch it there. You're getting a little empty. <laughs> am, I, am I listening to the scripture for what it, it really says? says? And if it sets on my feet, then put on some hard-toed shoes and, and yeah. let God step all over my out. feet. And work it out. And that happens a lot when you really get in the door and you start digging there. He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll point something at you and you'll, get, you'll excuse yourself. Well, this is why I did that, or this is why I said that, or so and so made me, or, you He's, know. He, yeah. says, he says, work out your own salvation, <laughs> fear and trembling. That's right. But why, if he, he, he tells me to work my own salvation out, well, aren't we going to want to make it mold our image and That's right. God? That's why he says to do it with fear and trembling because yeah. like all the while God is just the judge. Yeah, he's the one trying to mold you and you're like, no, no, you're not. I want to do this my way. You know, I don't want to stay this square box. I don't want to round and I, I want to be hard. I don't want to be soft and loving and kind. We you all know, it's, it's really all about love. We all have those familiar spirits that we don't want to let you have to go. That's true. So very true. Anybody else? With me, a lot of it, the, a lot of it is God talking to me is, is preaching in Sunday school and, and Bible studies. Like, gives me something to study and God talking to me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Preaching only brings it out to you that you need to look at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Anyone else? Any, God give anybody any ideas? <laughs> I was listening to Gordon Robinson and, and he was over in China preaching to the people over there. And uh, he was preaching for their safety and, you know, and not yeah. the, uh, Did you hear this? Yeah. No, I disagree and they do need yeah, a lot yeah, they of people. I'm sure if a lot of my friends knew that I spoke in tongues and believed that way, they would think twice about hanging around or doing something with me. But you know what? Hey, I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No. I'm not ashamed. Well, through your witness, they probably already know it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that will say they believe in God, yeah. you know, but do they really walk in it? Yeah, I believe in trembles. Anyone else? Mike, you want to share your interesting idea that God gave you or not? Okay. Uh, we are going to be in uh, Psalm 17. And I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation just because I looked at it today and I, <clears throat> I really like how how it wanted it. 
Psalm 17, and I'm going to read down to 8, I think. O oh Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayer, for it comes from honest lips. Declare me innocent, for you see those who do right. You have tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You have scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I am determined not to sin in what I say. I have followed your commands, which keep me from uh, following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed on your path. I have not wavered from following you. I am praying to you because I know you will answer, O oh God. Bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Guard me as you would guard your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. And I think I'm going to stop there. Jesus was a man of prayer, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. We know little, very little about his childhood before he became 12 years old. But at 12, he started ministering. And after he was baptized from John the Baptist, he went into the wilderness to pray for 40 days and be tested. Now watch his prayer life during his public ministry when the crowds pressed in on him and surrounded him and, and he was just kind of overwhelmed by the crowd. So he would seek to get off on his own to pray, go up on the mountain, to get alone, away from the people. Before any great undertaking, he prayed. He prayed when he went to raise Lazarus from the dead. Right? And um, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Drop, great drops of blood. He prayed so hard. So, and actually when he hung on the cross, he prayed. He prayed for the very ones that was crucifying him. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So I could say that Jesus was a man of prayer. And so he wants us to be people of prayer. He wants us to talk to him. That's all prayer is, really. Just talking to him, going throughout our day. You know, there's times I'm looking in my closet for something to wear, and I'm like, oh, Jesus, what should I wear today? What do you want me to wear today, Lord? I know that sounds stupid, <laughs> but it's not, really. Because, see, he's... He's our best friend. He's more than our best friend, but he's there. He hears us. He listens to us. He knows our concerns. Like I'm concerned for my dog right now, Barney. Pray for him. Um, uh, he, he's, his belly, I think, has been bothering him, and I, I think he uh, might have the C word. So <laughs> I'm not going to confess that. So just, just pray for him. And is that okay to pray for an animal? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. God made them. He actually made them first. Mm -hmm. Who was David in the Bible, this man that gives us this song? What's the scripture tell us about David? Man after God's own heart. Man after God's own heart. Man after his own heart. So... Why would you say that David was a man after God's own heart? Why do you think that God said that about him? I think, I think David understood that God was in charge of everything and that he was worthy of, you know, his praise you know, and his trust. Mm -hmm. David was a man that sang to God all the time. Great worship songs. 
He talked to God all the time. In other words, he prayed to him all the time. But yet, what else does scripture tell us about David? He's a sinner like you and me. He's a sinner like you, you and I were. When, uh, <clears throat> when he saw Bathsheba bathing on the top of that um, home, he sent a guard to get her and bring her to him. She had no say in it, really, but she was there. David sinned with her because she belonged with another man. She was already married. But yet God said he was a man after his own heart, and he sinned. He not only did that, he ended up committing adultery. He ended up killing her husband. Yeah. In the war, remember? And do you believe that since he was a man that was after God's own heart, that he prayed to God still and honored God still and worshipped him even though he did this sin? Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He was living in sin, but yet he still worshipped God and prayed to God. How many of us are still living in some kind of sin. And we're still praying to God and honoring God and coming to church and doing what we should do, but yet there's some sin in our life that we have not let go of yet. That's right. None of us are perfect. All of us. There's something in your life that you don't have control of. It kind of seems to take over you for some reason. Somebody said something wrong to you and you blew up, whatever. Or maybe God's been pointing the finger at you to give something up and you keep going back and getting it. <laughs> that one would be me. Diet Pepsi. But anyway, there's something that you're going to laugh at. That's the nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's some, we're, we, we're all sinners in some way. In some way. But David committed murder, and yet he still prayed with God. And would you say that maybe God was talking to him about it, but he was kind of ignoring God? He kept sinning with Bathsheba. He got sleeping with her, and yet he was ignoring God. He didn't want to hear what God had to say. He would pray to him. He would worship him, but he wasn't going to listen. Mm -hmm. do, do you think some of us do that? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We go about our busy day, don't we? We go about our busy day, and we do what we want to do, and we still give God homage, mm -hmm. but uh, we we take our own control, really. We give God little thought. God's supposed to be our first thought. We should talk to God about absolutely everything. you got to make a decision in your life. You need to be talking to Him about what decision you're supposed to do. This or that. I've heard Mike say sometimes, Oh, you can't always do that. you gotta, you got to get it while it's hot. You know, we can't just wait. I'm like, yeah, you can. Because if it's God, God won't let that thing go before, you know, God will hold it just for you. Right? So he may have somebody else give it and then give it to you. You, yeah, you, know, you just don't know. You just don't know. God will do what God wants to do. Now, now David, even though he went and paying attention to God, because I can do this sometimes. I can kind of ignore God, and I hate to say that, but if I want to do something, I, I, I don't want really to hear what he has to say about it, because he might say, I want you to wait. And I don't want to wait. I'm bad about buying things on Amazon, you know, because I think I need it. Ugh. 
I love Amazon, but then there's times I hate Amazon because God likes to teach us, you know, he wants us to not waste our money. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten something and found out I really didn't need it. And I spent $30 on it or $12 on it or maybe it's $9 on it or maybe it's, you know, some other. If I can count up everything I've bought on Amazon that I didn't really need, that adds up to quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. It might be a little bit here and a little bit there, but through the whole year, that's quite a bit of money. When that could have went for something that God wanted to go to, right? Yeah. So we should really, really pray about everything. Amen. Because we want to be in His will. Now, um, what happened to uh, David? I mean, what if David was committing this sin? Let's just say nobody else knew. You know, they didn't know. Nobody else knew. He thought he was getting away with it. Right? He thought he was getting away with it. You know, nobody knew. But God knew. So what did God do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He did. He sent a prophet. Now, God was saying, I'm not going to be ignored. I am not going to be ignored. Don't think for one minute that I can't take control of this situation and turn it around. He spoke to a prophet of God. God still speaks to prophets today. Yes, a lot of people don't believe that there are prophets, but there are actual prophets today. They want to get them mixed up with mediums or psychics or whatever. They're totally two different things. But God still speaks. So he speaks to this prophet of God. And he tells him this story. And this prophet goes down. And he, he goes, David, I've got a little story to tell you about a little lamb. Now, he was telling David the story about the lamb and how this guy... Loved this little lamb as a pet, you know, and is all he had in his whole life. He wasn't married, didn't have, worked hard, you know, and all he had was this pet, pet little lamb that he took care of. And he loved his pet. And then some man came along, grabbed that little lamb, cooked it, and ate it. He was telling David this story. He, and David's anger rose up because this little lamb got it eaten. And this guy loved that little lamb so much. And he says, well, let's take him and kill him. And David said, you're that man. Because you snatched away this beautiful woman out of this other man's life that he loved so desperately. Not only did you do that, David, you had her husband killed. You murdered. So then David was found out by the prophet. And what did he do? He repented. He repented. Then, when he was confronted by God, he truly knew God was calling him out. And he had the choice to either be damned or repent. Now, when he repented, God forgave him, right? God, had, God will always forgive you when, you when you truly repent. Now, sometimes I, I wonder about this people who get caught up in drugs, and they keep coming back, and they keep repenting and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and they keep going back out and doing it again, and again, and again. And again, and they keep coming back to God, coming back. God forgives them every time. I want to tell you that. But there will come a time when God, I've had enough. The drop the spirit. Yeah, uh huh. That, that very that very scripture. He'll withdraw his spirit. Well, I'm done. Yeah. That's what David asked God. He said, "Don't take your spirit from me." Mm hmm. He asked him, pleaded with him, please, God, don't take your spirit from me. Sometimes God gets fed up with us. 
Because, see, we think we know it all. We don't know it all. None of us knows it all. There ain't no minister in the world that knows it all. God is God, and we have to know that. We might think we know everything, but we don't. That's why sometimes, you know, there's so many different views. Ministers, there's so many, even on the rapture, there's like three or four different views. Or even on predestination, or what, there's, there's different views. People have different opinions. None of us truly know for sure. Only God. Only God. All we know to do is to pray. God will forgive you. He always does. But he expects us to walk out our own salvation. Work it out. Work it out. Are you going to fall? Yeah, you're going to fall. Yes, you're going to fall. Are we supposed to give up on people? Like I was talking about the, the ones caught up in drugs that keep coming back and saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are we supposed to give up on them? No. But you're not supposed to let them use you either. Discernment is so needed. Because sometimes when you think you're doing a good thing for them, you're actually enabling them to keep up their, their sin. Now, <clears throat> let's just say, Naaman the prophet called out David. Now, when a minister, and this happens sometimes, a true minister knows of a sin that someone keeps doing over and over and over and over again. You call that a stronghold. We call that a stronghold. And say they're within the church and they confess they're a Christian. They're part of the church. They work hard in the church. But yet they keep falling in some area of their life and letting that take over them. If a minister confronts them, what happens usually? They get mad. They get upset. They start giving excuses for their sin, or they leave. Most times they'll leave. Yeah. They'll get mad and leave. Now if they have a repentant heart, they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, I know. Help me walk it out. And that's how you know when somebody's truly sorry, is they will let you be accountable to them to keep them from that sin. Right? Sometimes we need accountability. What accountability partner is what people say it is. A prayer partner. Spiritual advisor. And just like, you know, when you're listening to God, when you get down low and you're listening to God, sometimes you don't know if it's God or not. Sometimes you might think it's you. Maybe you might take that thought or what was said or what, or what you think God said and bring it to somebody else and say, you know, hey, I think God is is talking to me and, and telling me to do this. What do you think? Someone who's, you know, in the church and is a spiritual person. Don't take it to just anybody, but someone who is in the church and is a spiritual person, he's going to give you uh, what he thinks God's word is. Well, yeah, I think that could be God. Or no, God wouldn't tell you that because it goes against God's word. Okay? Sometimes we need that person. Right? David knew once once the prophet spoke to him that he had to he had to um, repent and call come back to God. My mouth is dry, I can't always speak. But he had to come back to God. I have to repent still. Thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Maybe you see some good looking guy on TV and you're like, mm. I'm just being real. <laughs> you know, it's like our thoughts. We've got to get away from that. Right? Get away from that thinking. So God did speak to some people this week. He spoke to Steve about love, He spoke to Bruce about the kingdom. He spoke to Barb about uh, walking the walk, kind of searching the scriptures out. 
So he is speaking. And he also gives ideas. He spoke to Mike about, and I'll share this, um, um, trying to get a concession trailer to put out in front of the church to uh, for fundraisers because Southside didn't have much over here, but he thought that if they do that a couple days a week, that um, it could be a fundraiser for the church to earn money. You know, to either keep it going or, or whatever. I will say this, we're a small church, but God has provided. Yes. And he's been faithful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Amen? Change is coming. Now, Wednesday night, we're not very big in numbers, but I would like to see more people coming on Wednesday. You know, um, we're finishing up a teaching on Priscilla Shire. We have four more video teachings. And then I think we're going to turn it over to what we call maybe a lay it on the table or talk it out or whatever. And uh, um, Richard and Bruce are going to kind of share doing that. And that's just people coming together, talking about the Bible, something that they've got on their mind. No, there's going to be no, uh, that I know of, no basic thing to talk about. Just something that maybe, maybe you want to ask a question about the Bible. They're going to talk it out. And then I think Bruce, then I think maybe once a month or something like that, we're going to maybe meet at Bruce or Richard's house and around the campfire or something and talk. But, um. It'll be different next month on Wednesday nights. Uh, guys are going to do it. And then maybe once a month, just like the prayer breakfast, we want to let, you know, go to somebody's house and do that. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I'm all for if someone thinks they something should be different, I think that that's God saying, go ahead. Maybe you need to do this, you know. And Bruce, I do think that you talked about having a Bible study at your house. I've heard you say that before. I think that's important for Jackie. She needs to be hearing the Word of God. I'm not sure it's going to be in our house, but I do think I'm going to have a Bible study at some point, you know, at, uh, in, Peru. in Peru area someplace. Because I know when we had it before, it, it drew a lot of people. You know, it was good just to sit down and, and be able to, you know, the Steve was talking about studying yeah. First John. I think it took us that 25 chapters in First John. It took us about a year to get through it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. you know, it, it it just give everybody a chance to become real. You know, sometimes I know I know you know Judy and everything. You know, there was times when. Uh, you know, we could tell each other and cry. I mean, because we understood that we were doing some things that we should have been doing. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, and, and, you know, the good thing was that we could kind of encourage each other not to do those things and to, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is you really got to know the person. That's what I was talking about with Richard, you know. Richard and I get to Gavin after church. And we enjoy visiting with each other, and Diane gets kind of tired of standing up talking to us. So she goes to the car, and Richard says, well, I guess I better get going. And I understand that, because, you know, Jackie would do the same for me, you know. And uh, but I, and that's why I told him, I said, oh, it would be nice to sit down around the campfire sometime where we could do something like that, you know, and, and just mm -hmm. just have a good time, you know, and, and not feel the constraints of time, you know, that we got a other things to do. Uh, so, you know, that's, and that's kind of where we were talking about, you know, I don't know how often we'll do it or whatever, but, and I don't know to always be at our house. I've got a pond back behind my house, uh, several places we could have it, but just some place we could meet. Uh, like my house, there's very many things we could get in there. I've got picnic tables, but there again, that depends on weather, you know, when you try to find something ahead. 
Like I said, it, it, it is, I do think the small group, you know, is, is important. Yeah. And, and we are pretty much a small group at this mm -hmm. point here in the church. I think that's one thing that's held us together and kept us going. We are family. Yeah, we're the base. We're the foundation, so we need building stones to build it up. Yeah. Or not, because, you know, it needs to grow. With that said, Wednesday night at 6 30, let's close in prayer. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this uh, little message. I want to thank you, Lord, that you teach us to come to you in prayer, Lord, and that we can uh, know that mercies are new every morning, Father God. Help us to repent of the things in our lives that we know that we shouldn't be doing, Father God. And, and just like David, Lord, let us. Let us just fall on our knees before, before you, Lord, and just continue to ask you for mercy. Continue to ask you, Lord, for your wonderful blessings on our life. We thank you so very much. Amen. God bless you. Keep coming back. The Word works when you work it. Take your bulletin with you.